and welcome back to SpeedyNet, the company of the future, at least uh, three years in the future <laughs> from uh, where we left off last video, I believe. <laughs> yeah, we made a jump in time and that's not because I accidentally forgot the, to shut down the game and left it running and then accidentally saved. No, <laughs> it doesn't even sound plausible. <laughs> no, it is because I've been busy. Because if we take a look over here, you will see shiny new trains everywhere. I've gone ahead and I've updated all our trains. The whole fleet is now the most up-to-date we can have. We have the fastest uh, wagons, we have the fastest cabooses, the fastest locomotives. Everything is upgraded, even this. Yes, I've gone ahead and I've upgraded all the trains over here. <laughs> now you might wonder like, alright, so where, why are these the slow gondola types? <laughs> That's because they're combi trains and uh, they haul sand and supplies as well. So that's why I left them in this group, but for the rest, pretty much all are... Uh, supply trains are express wagons, so they're fast and... Ah, yeah, it's just looking amazing. So um, that's pretty good. Now you might wonder, like, all right, so um, the results. <laughs> I mean, what are the results of that? Let me just show you a very disturbing financial sheet here. <laughs> yeah, we haven't exactly been making a profit. No, <laughs> um, it's actually. I mean, 1892 is when I also did a uh, major upgrading, and that was showing like minus 10. Uh, I don't know, minus 10 million or something. I guess uh, it was bad. It was really, really bad. And actually, it shows over here the best. Where is it? Uh, not property maintenance. New vehicles. Yeah, look at that. I mean, 16, 10 million. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. So, in the end, though, it did have results. Because if we take a look over here, and this is the interesting bit, all right? I think we started like around over here, you know, this is where we had our little profit bloom from the increased uh, farm production and all that. And then I've been going around, you know, changing trains and surprisingly, we are now actually moving more goods purely because of the faster trains. Well, actually, th this, this is just the profit that we're making, but we're making more profit because of faster trains. Now, of course, it does make sense in a way, because, uh, well, you know, clever tycoon me, I did uh, reduce the number of trains quite a bit. Nothing in total, we're like 15 trains lighter uh, or so. So well, that's good, I mean it reduces the load on the network, so all in all everything is good. But man, I mean that was a long job, you know, that was meticulous and it led me to think about a thing, you know, for the future. Where I think that, because the main issue really was that we could not replace uh, the locomotives with the same version of itself, just a more updated one. And because of that, I think I'm gonna, you know, just put in as a rule that we only upgrade locomotive types rather than upgraded versions. Unless, you know, the disparity becomes really big. Well, then maybe, you know, it, we should consider it. But man, that was a lot of work, so... Don't really like doing that. Now, um... That's one thing. Uh, the unfortunate news is that, <laughs> we, in the meantime, you know, in those three years, we're still running horses. I mean, we got electrified rails over here even, <laughs> but we're still using horses. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. Now I'm expecting new vehicles any moment, really. I think between now and five years, we should have a new batch of them coming. Hopefully <laughs> ones that will actually be an improvement over the horses so that we can start to seriously cut down on the numbers, which is just ever, ever growing. <laughs> yeah, I know it's bad. Ah well, right, so, well, um, that was a small update on what I've been doing, and let me just quickly, because I haven't seen this myself either. Well, from over here we started, 
I think it's safe to say that the amount of cargo moved, you know, the increasement in that is far less than the amount of profit increase. At least when you take a look at it, you know, from a percentage base. Another thing that I've noticed is that because we have now upgraded the speed on the locomotives, I mean pretty much all of them which do not pull heavy loads can go a 112 kilometers. And that means this look at this it is only ever so often that this happens but i can only imagine that once we have even faster trains uh this should happen more frequently now there is one other important thing that i did which i wanted to tell you about uh, where is it yeah over here so what i've done and well basically that isn't really like you know the greatest thing um but what i've done is I have put uh, two trains over here. Look, see, <laughs> because these mines, they just, well, you can see 81 tons of coal over here, but it's double production. Um, you know, the one train just wasn't getting here fast enough. <laughs> Simple as that. So that's why I've gone with two trains. That does mean, of course, that this whole setup over here is kind of like less than ideal because the train pretty much has to wait. Uh, over here till the other one has gone all the way over here and unloaded now there is a way to prevent that uh, rather than building two new tracks completely which I think is what we should do and that is if we go to the timetable option we should uh, start timetabling this and what that will do is that there will always be equal intervals and with two trains that mean that when uh, one trains over here <laughs> the other train will be somewhere at this other station so that should reduce the uh, the amount of uh, minutes that the trains have to wait on each other here to a bare minimum so well having done that um, there was one more thing that i wanted to show you oh yeah I think, I don't think I've ever shown it really, but it was, you know, for me, it's a great tool when I'm balancing things uh, in general. Uh, I just, well, because I, I do all the balancing off camera or off screen or whatever you want to call it really. Um, well, how I do that, especially with the passengers, you know, is I just go to the station list here and... Well, it's already preset over here. Right now I was looking at a fishing uh, harbor. And you can see that there's like quite a few of these, well, you know, these <laughs> these fishing grounds where there's a lot of fish. I mean, dead fish, you know, this is like, a, a, well, pretty much a <laughs> environmental disaster if this were all dead fish. But you can see clearly that, you know, the amount of capacity needs to be changed. So I did, I upgraded this uh, with a bigger ship. And doing this, you know, you can really see which stations are just, you know, accumulating too much. So for example, if we go over here, you can see there's quite a few stations with quite a few passengers, but not that many. One was a uh, Roar Boro, um, where you can see this is got out of hand completely but it's mostly passengers that just go uh, or that need to go to Dunfingley so what I did was uh, I just cloned a bunch of uh, road vehicles here you know horses <laughs> and um, that should hopefully be reduced so it's really just a neat trick thought I'd share it with you if I haven't done it before already <laughs> I now know that I have shared it with you <laughs> there it's all for the sharing isn't it um, so, now, last time we left off, we were left with the, uh, dangerous, or well, not dangerous, but the mysterious, uh, well, way of how to get petrol <laughs> to the cities. And I now know the answer, uh, thanks to quite a few, uh, comments and also the big and open interwebs. Because the way to get petrol towards a town, and I think, but no. Bunfing Bridge, yeah, is a town that only needs petrol. If we want to get that over there, we need to go over here to fund new industry. And we can then go to Lille, down here. Oh, where is it now? There, petrol station. Now, that is a thing, you know. I'm kind of against it to 
artificially put uh, industries anywhere. I, I mean, it's not really a thing, you know, that I'm like, yeah, this is it. I mean, I know it's a strategy, you know, to optimize your network, but I kind of like to work with what I've been given, and this is kind of like totally against it. But because this is the only way to get towns to grow and to start shipping our petrol, we will start doing uh, this, you know. This is the one exception I will make to funding industries. <laughs> it's a bit cheesy because we do not have any petrol engines or anything yet, but <laughs> we will have the petrol stations. <laughs> I don't know how they'll do business. <laughs> if all they can do is buy goods and <laughs> never sell them. <laughs> but I guess that's for them <laughs> and the bank to, uh, <laughs> you know, to fight out. <laughs> So, um, now that we have uh, made the decision, we need to, of course, find the towns where we're going to build the petrol station. And, well, I mean, Bunfing Bridge is an easy option, but uh, it isn't really... Oh, I can't fund it. Available from 1909. Huh. Well, that sucks, <laughs> really. Could I make a... Yeah, I could make a quarry. <laughs> this is not, like, uh, accessible. Balls! Well, I guess that pretty much uh, stops our petrol adventures right there <laughs> till 1909. Drat. I hadn't even seen that. <laughs> oh man. Well, I guess you'll just have to refine your oil for quite a while and uh, <laughs> yeah, hmm, not good. Ah well, right. Um, we will come back to uh, growing the town some more in 1909. <laughs> Uh, the other thing that I kind of wanted to take a look at with you, the viewer, uh, is the amount of new industries that we have, because there's quite a few. Now, if we go to the industry map over here and just disable everything, we could then zoom out. This is our network, right? Now, um, let's me just see here. We have a few new industries, but man, <laughs> this is small. So, let me just quickly make a selection here. Right, so I've made the selection after carefully uh, looking at it and seeing like, well, there's quite a few industries <laughs> that are just not accessible yet. However, these three are. And I believe that that is like kind of part of a whole new industry chain. Now, um, what it consists of, and let me, uh, let us just go over here so that I can uh, show you, is that... If I do this, ooh, that's nice. Right, uh, I believe, yeah, here, here it is, the steel mill. This, this is not where it starts, by the way, but um, the steel mill uh, accepts iron ore, coal, and scrap metal, and it will turn it all into, uh, well, just regular metal. But it will, I mean, scrap metal comes from like scrap yards, which are also new. And rather than just making uh, metal, they will uh, make scrap metal. Which, well, <laughs> we could also bring to an aluminium plant, but that is even further into the future. But a steel mill it is for right now, and that accepts coal, iron, and scrap metal. Which it all turns into uh, metal. And I think, well, actually, it's quite funny, you know. Oh, no, no, I was thinking that for one, the iron ore and coal, but yeah, of course, it will make, uh, it will make metal from that. But I, I believe that with this, you know, we, rather than needing uh, wood for the, uh, for the metal production, we could use coal. I think that this is also quite a big option. However, the downside is that coal mines and iron ore mines all need engineering supplies, which this, uh, you know, well, not the steel mill, but, and this is the other new one, the metal fabrication plant. I believe that this, uh, no, it doesn't make. Uh, uh, all right, let's, uh, let me zoom out just a little bit. Let, let's get the map out there. Yeah, there's a metal fabrication plant like right there. <laughs> so let's zoom in again. I thought really that the is no, that's a textile mill. Where is it? <laughs> a metal fabrication plant. <laughs> Come out. Oh, no, that's a glass works. Yeah, this is it. Right. I thought that this would make us um, engineering supplies too and uh, farm supplies. It doesn't, however. Uh, let me see. Uh, is it the al aluminium plant? 
No. And then a metal workshop? Is that it? No, that... Hmm. I, I'd looked at this, you know, like, uh, I think a week or two or so ago, and I swear <laughs> that there was an industry that made... Uh, was it the machine shop then? Yeah, look at that. Farm supplies and engineering supplies. And that's it, the machine shop. Uh, do we have that? I don't know how many we have of those machine shops, <laughs> if at all any. But the interesting thing is that th this can put metal and petrol uh, into farm supplies and engineering supplies. And here lies the key, because petrol is a thing that comes from oil wells uh, that is always produced in great abundance. So, however, the downside is that we also want to use petrol to grow our cities, but <laughs> seeing how we currently cannot use petrol, I think that a machine shop, if we have one, would be a decent alternative. Now, <laughs> let me go back to the map again, and uh, let me see here, we do have machine shops. This could become really, really interesting. Now, the question is, of course, I mean, do we really want to venture into this? The game could be huge, but we would need to know, well, we, <laughs> we gotta know where the scrapyards are, which isn't really in that many places. I mean, considering that, like, for example, iron ore mines, uh, there, no, <laughs> those are iron works. But we have like 430 iron ore mines, and even those aren't really in an abundance. Um, the scrapyards, I mean, really, <laughs> look at that, I mean, the whole area that we're looking at is kind of like void. <laughs> There's a few on the edges. So scrapyards aren't really a serious uh, option yet, so we'll disable those. Maybe in the future, you know, once <laughs> we also have like 430 of those on the map. But, um... Yeah, the iron ore mines, and then clustered with, uh, let me see, the oil wells. Uh, oil wells. I mean, clustered with those, that is a very, very potent uh, combination, I feel. Now, we just need to find, like, a nice cluster of oil wells, like we had over here, for example. We just need to find another one of those that is also close to some iron ore mines. And then, well, we don't need the metal fabrication plant because that was a bust. <laughs> I wanted, I knew it was, you know, wanting the machine shop. But if we take a look over here, now if I mouse over the iron ore mines, I mean they're they're, they're, they're kind of like camo colored really on the map <laughs> because I can barely see them. But I can see that uh, oil wells and. Well, over here, uh, there's just one oil well. I need like a cluster of oil wells. Hmm, <laughs> well, over here, I mean, clearly this is the area where this could be a very, very potent combination, but <laughs> well, it is a bit far away. I kind of do want to have it, you know, attaching to our current network. Oh, you know, this area over here also seems good. Now, somebody also kind of like, like asked, like, why don't you go and expand like over here in the original area? Which, which is a fair point. Yeah, I mean, we could do that, but I'm kind of like, now that I know of this combination, because this was previously new to me, I'm kind of like, all right, you know, whatever it takes, I want to start using these new industries. So we kind of need to grow towards them. Now there's four iron ore mines over here, I see, and like, well, five oil wells with another two over here. I mean, what are we looking at, really? Yeah, well, if we... <laughs> All right, uh, let's also get the oil refineries out there. All right, they're reasonably close. Reasonably close. Now, because of the, uh, the steel mill, we also want to know where the coal mines are. Ooh, now this could become very, very interesting as there is like a cluster over here and over here, which means that we could kind of like, ah, oh, this is way too big. I mean, those distances are just too freaking huge. I don't think this is like a right area. I think over here we have more chance for a good combo. Mm, no, maybe not. <laughs> it's a lack of iron. 
Yeah, it's just, you know, I mean, if we were to go over here, we could, we would need like a good area for these goods to be combined. And I just don't see it happening. I mean, I can see, now well, maybe the distance, uh, <laughs> it's difficult, it's difficult. We do know that there is a good uh, area over here. Well, that was too far. Well, you know, I mean, there are areas, let me put it like that, where this could really come into fruition. Uh, it's just a matter of finding them. I do think, though, that in the end, because you use coal and iron ore mines and uh, uh, petrol, you know, that the turnover is much, much, much greater. In any case, um... That, that, those are like the new industries that I wanted to show off. I kind of have to make like a, you know, a quick scoop around and see what we're gonna do with that off camera so that I have the time to <laughs> take, you know, take a proper look and plan out our next move. But um, there is one other thing that I can kind of needs doing really. That is like a bit of, well, maintenance that we need to do on our tracks and that is over here. This station over here, and if you take a look at it, it has <laughs> this many trains on a two-lane station. <laughs> that is not good. Uh, what's also not good is this builder's yard over here. That basically... Ooh, hmm. Well, that ain't good. <laughs> that much is pretty much certain. Right. Yeah, that is a small issue. <laughs> I just um, didn't really realize. So I guess we can't really do much about this station, seeing how this freaking builder's yard popped up there. Right, well, in that case we won't. Um, I will see you back in a moment with a plan on where we're going to expand next. All right, and we're back. I, ladies and gentlemen, have found ourselves a place where we should expand next. It's a bit of a compromise uh, for like those who wanted this region to be expanded. It is this island over here. It is uh, close to our original starting zone, you know, the place where it all started. But, um, yeah, it's this island. Now, I think that this island has quite some potential. Um, well, <laughs> you know, this map might not show that much, but uh, first of all, you know, it's uh, well, close to our uh, uh, network, so we can easily just join the whole thing up. But um, there's like two quarries over here. There's like three dredging sites uh, around the place. I think that over here, we could get this lime kiln to work quite well for us and start making uh, some farm supplies. Those farm supplies uh, could then be turned into, well, uh, high production for like this mixed farm and uh, this arable farm and let's see there's a, like quite a few diary farms out there which then in turn i mean well <laughs> okay this one might be a little bit too far out but uh, you know those farms i mean look at this there's like a dairy over there or diary <laughs> and, uh, you know <laughs> quite a few people pointed out it was dairy but still <laughs> diary <laughs> oh man sometimes i'm so stubborn no but there's like a diary over there there's a textile mill um uh, where was the other thing i saw another thing that was like really neat you know, for, yeah, look, there's a grain mill, there, there's fruit plantations, two of them. It's a brewery over here. Uh, and over here is a stockyard. So I think that, you know, with the right uh, hooking up of stuff, we can get quite a deal out of this island, I think. And let me just quickly see. Uh, <laughs> there isn't really any more dredging sites uh, close by. No, no, there isn't. I mean, well, there is this one, but I think that this one, unless it's... Oh, oh it is producing an absolute crazy amount. All right, maybe, maybe we should hook this one up, but this one, it will be so long distance. I don't think we can rely on it, but these two, I mean, how much are you producing? Roughly the same amount. You're, like, not that well producing. Yeah, but the, like those three and those two quarries, I mean, that's like a pretty solid production. We should definitely be able to at least get like you and you. 
And then maybe like, I don't know, that farm. And I think we can pretty much get all of the farms on double production and maybe even some on like quadruple production. I don't know if that will be really worth it. But um, that's the plan, and that's what we're gonna do. So I think it wouldn't be such a bad idea to at least get started with uh, hooking up this quarry. Now, well, we've got to keep one thing in mind, that this will of course be hooked up to the main network. So we're gonna have a connection coming up from over here that needs to hook up to the quarry. And... Well, ideally, but again, it's one of those freaking builder yards. Um, ideally, I have had, did, would have had the station over here. What would have been the most ideal place? You are ruining everything, <laughs> builder yard. So, unfortunately, we kind of have to put it over here. And that means that, you know, any passenger terminals that we're going to make we we'll kind of like have to be, I don't know, you know, done with uh, road vehicles and all that, but oh well, <laughs> it is what it is. So um, yeah, I think uh, we should get started, and uh, you know what? Maybe we should also get ourselves a canal, huh? Because in the end, we've got to hook up two dredging sites. I don't think we'll be able to put like a station here with a dock there and there, all part of the same entity. And we're also gonna do some canal digging, I think. Cool, cool. Right, let's get building. All 
Alrighty, and look at this. It seems that we have our very first uh, line running, no, well, <laughs> between Brinding Hall and Daboro. <laughs> and I think that, especially Brinding Hall, having pretty much encircled the whole city with uh, tracks, I don't think they're liking us that much anymore. <laughs> don't know why, <laughs> but uh, it's just an impression that I have. Now, um, we could, we do of course need some more goods over here, but I don't know, I kind of want to build the canals first and I already see that I might have derped up the canal building. Um, what I had in mind was a continuous canal, but... I don't know, all of a sudden I don't think that's gonna happen. I think what's gonna happen rather is that we're gonna have a canal that goes over here and we're gonna have a canal that well kind of like goes somewhere till over here perhaps because this station might need to expand at some point because this is going to be quite a central hub for everything yeah, I mean it's four lane. That's uh, you know four yeah four lane station. That's quite big. I mean I don't think because it's an island. I think this is big enough. So we're gonna build a canal, you know, canal till over here, and um, we're gonna have the dredging sides uh, go towards on this lime kiln. But <laughs> I do think <laughs> that Daboro <laughs> might need some smooth talking first. So maybe those dredging sides. I'm gonna have to wait uh, for a while. Yeah, I'm pretty sure of it. Um, one thing though that we could do, of course, is speed up the, uh, well, you know, the, how much the local authority of the borough likes us is uh, by maybe also adding a mail service. <laughs> you know, just an idea, might help. <laughs> so we'll go over to the borough and over there. And that's pretty much it actually. I'll unload there first. Just so that we don't have the pickup of uh well, you know, of uh mail uh, back and forth in between. So there, right. Well I guess that this is the first train load of passengers from the borough. Look at that! Well, here we are having a fully functional line in here. I think, um, yeah, next thing would be to hook up the quarries and the dredging sites and everything else. But that and more all has to wait for next time when we play more Open TTD.